Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how you can fracture objects using RealFlow. So basically if you don't have access to something like Rayfire in 3ds Max you can also use RealFlow to do the same effect. So let's get started. I'm just going to reset this project. I'm going to create a new project. Okay, so let's give it a name. And uh, first of all, let's just zoom out here a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the geometry tab at the top and I'm going to create a plane. And I'm just going to press R on the keyboard to scale that to just make it a little bit bigger so we've got something to work with. And then here on the side, I'm just going to click on this little uh, sphere here so that it textures, it show the textures on that uh, object. And uh, then we're going to click on a cube and I'm also just going to scale it up a bit uh, to create like a wall structure, something like something like that. And I'm pressing W on the keyboard to move it up or down. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit and something like that. And I'm also going to click the sphere so we can actually see the textures on that. OK, I'm going to click on this one, um, flat shade it. So we've got that. OK, and then I'm going to create a sphere. And I'm just going to scale that up as well, something like that. And I'm also moved it out. And uh, let's set that to flat shaded as well. And I'm going to move it to the front here. And I'm going to move this wall a little bit closer. So we've got something like this. So first of all, let's just record the animation of this sphere. So it actually moves through this wall. So make sure you're on the first frame or frame zero. And I'm going to right click on the sphere and I'm going to go to add key and then transformation key. And that's going to create a key on that frame. And then let's go to, let's say, frame 40, move the sphere right through the wall, right click on the sphere, add key and then transformation key. And then basically we've got that animation saved. OK, next up, we want to fracture our wall. So just highlight the wall. And then right here at the top where it says Object Dynamics, click on that. And then the first Fracture tool, I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask you how many pieces you want to fracture this object into. So I'm going to set this to 50 for now. And uh, I'm going to click on OK, and that's going to fracture it. And it's actually going to create a new object. So here in the Relationship Editor, you can see that it's got a fractured 0, 1 object here, and also a cube. So it actually created a new object. So you can go ahead and click on Cube and then delete that so you only um, you only left with the fractured object and I'm going to set that to flat shaded as well so we've got that and um, obviously nothing will happen if you play through that animation we need to set the object dynamics so first of all let's click on the plane and then you're on the side where it says dynamics I'm going to set this to so if you just click down there I'm going to set this to passive rigid body because that's not going to actually um, activate or it's not going to be affected by the simulation and um, it's only going to be there to for these objects to fall on or to bounce on. And then we're going to click on the sphere and we're going to do the same thing. So dynamics, I'm going to set to uh, passive rigid body. And that's because we've added the animation already. So it's not an active uh, rigid body, it's a passive rigid body. Okay, and then lastly, click on the fractured object and we're going to set the dynamics to active rigid body. All right, so now if we click on simulate here at the bottom, we should see something happening. There we go. So it's actually fracturing this object. And as you can see, they're just floating around because we don't have any gravity yet. So I'm just going to stop the simulation, go back to the first frame. You can reset this uh, simulation, click on yes to, to not save that uh, data. And then we're going to go to the demons tab here at the top and click on gravity. And I'm just going to move it out of the way. Don't have to do that. Um, but I usually like to just put it somewhere so I can see it. And uh, now if we click simulate again, you'll see that we'll have some gravity. There we go. So it's affecting that. And as you can see, uh, these uh, little fractures are actually falling onto the plane, falling off the plane. So they're looking really cool. OK, so once the simulation is done, I just want to quickly show you something. If we zoom in here, you can see that um, this wall is actually not touching the plane at the moment. So when the simulation starts, you can actually see that these fractures are falling towards the plane before it actually hits it. And sometimes you don't want that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch the gravity off before the sphere actually hits the wall. So on frame zero, I'm just going to click on the gravity node here in the relationship editor. And I'm going to set the simulation to inactive. And then I'm going to right click on that and go add key. And that's going to add a keyframe for that. And then I'm going to go forward frame by frame. And just before the sphere actually touches the wall. So frame eight, I'm going to change this um, gravity 
to active and I'm going to right click and set a key for that as well. So now basically if you toggle through you'll see that the gravity is off and then by frame 8 it will actually switch to active. Okay, so let's just do a simulation again. So I'm going to reset my scene, click on yes, and then simulate again. And now you'll see that the wall will actually not be affected by gravity before the sphere touches it. So let's just run through the simulation quickly. So now you can see that the gravity is not affecting the wall until the sphere actually hits it, which is pretty cool. And that's basically how you fracture objects using RealFlow. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and also remember to click on that subscribe button if you want to see more weekly tutorials. Cool, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, bye.